Uh, so hi everyone. Today we will be discussing about a very very important algorithm in uh, in statistics that is expectation maximization algorithm. Uh, it is uh, useful for uh, figuring out latent variables in an environment given some observations. Uh, one of the user uh, like I have used it for missing uh, filling out missing values in your data, but it still has but has a wide variety of uh, usage across statistics and machine learning data science. So a very very important algorithm to get uh, to know. So let's uh, uh, get started with expectation minimization. Let's understand how it works uh, using an example. So assume that uh, we have two biased coins. Uh, by biased, we mean that uh, the probability of getting a head and tails is not 50-50, but it is something else. Assume that the first coin has uh, has uh, a bias of theta a. Similarly, uh, the second coin has a bias of theta b. This means that uh, the probability of getting a heads is theta a and not 0.5. Now theta a can be 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, anything. And similarly for theta, uh, the, sim the probability of getting a heads from coin sec from second coin is theta b. Now assume that I give you uh, some of the observations from the environment. That these are the observations that we have got: heads, tail, 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 heads, heads, tail, heads, tail, heads. Uh, similarly, other four observations. And we I have also mentioned that the uh, the first uh, observation is from coin b. The blue ones are from coin b, and uh, the red ones are from coin a. Now, if I tell you that you need to calculate the bias theta and theta b, it can be a little easier. What you would do is that you will uh, calculate the total number of heads, total number of tails. Similarly, for total for coin b, also you will calculate total number of heads and total number of tails, and eventually you will average out, and you will try to figure out total number of heads upon total uh, coin flips equals 0.8, and similarly uh, for theta b, it would be total number of heads upon total flips, that is 20. Uh, and 0.45 we are getting. Eventually, uh, you are able to calculate theta a and theta b very easily using uh, knowing that uh, which observations belong to which coin, and we have given some observations. Now, if I tweak that above condition a little bit, see this image where we are not sure ki which uh, which coin has um, which uh, iteration, like which example which example belongs to which coin. All the observations have been uh, like poured down here, and nothing has been mentioned. Ki which coin was used for the first set of observation? Which coin was used for the second set of observations? Now, can we still calculate theta a and theta b to 0.8 and 0.45? Remember these numbers. Yes, I think this is where expectation and uh, expectation maximization algorithm would be coming in picture and help us to determine theta a and theta b without even knowing which observation belongs to which coin. Now, this is something interesting. And I guess I might have caught your attention now. Uh, so uh, the two steps involved uh, between uh, expectation and maximization is as uh, obvious. Expect estimate the expected value for the hidden value. You would be uh, like you would be like you would be giving uh, a rough estimate. Okay, theta a can be 0.6 and theta b can be 0.5, and then maximize, optimize parameters using maximum likelihood. Then you need to optimize those values. So let's see. Uh, let's run through an example. Let's run through one iteration. I think everything would be clear. Uh, so assume that uh, we uh, expected theta a to be 0.6 and theta b to be 0.5, right? Uh, and if you remember, the actual answer that we're expecting is 0.8 and 0.45. So let's see whether it converges or not. Now we have taken all the input uh, with us. Uh, so first of all, we need to understand uh, binomial distribution before we jump into the mathematics. So if you remember in your uh, class 12th, uh, there was an algorithm around binomial distributions. So binomial division is used to model the probability of a system with only two possible outcomes binary. We perform k number of trials and wish to know the probability of a certain combination of success and failure. And which is the, and we are using this formula. So you might have remember having questions like uh, uh, we are having 10 ships coming in. Uh, what is the probability of four ships able to uh, deliver successfully and six not able to deliver successfully? What is the probability of this entire combination? So these are the sort of questions that we used to get in a board exams. So I pretty much remember the binomial distribution. The formula for binomial distribution is um, n exponential upon n minus x exponential x exponential probability of x into q n minus x. Now uh, the the whole formula depends upon success and failure. The output is just binary, and that is why we would be using it. So n is the total number of uh, flips, uh, the total number of samples that we have. X is the total number of success, uh, success we have. P is the probability of success, and Q is the probability of failure. So in this example, uh, what we would be doing is that uh, x becomes our uh, total number of heads. N becomes our total number of coin flips. 
P becomes a probability of getting a head and Q becomes a probability of getting a tails. That is a failure for heads because there are two only two options present. So this is the binomial distribution. So in binomial, like uh, just to recap, binomial distribution is used to pro get probabilities for a system where we are performing k number of trials and there the options and the only two possible outcomes are success or failure. And this is the formula that we would be using. So first of all, what we are doing is uh, we are expecting a value. We are like we have set up a value for a and b that is uh, 0.6 and 0.5. Now, if we go back uh, in the first example, in the first row, we can see that heads, tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads. So there are five heads and five tails. Hence, we have five success and five failures. Right now, if we wish to know that which coin it belonged to, uh, we would be following the binomial distribution. So uh, as uh, we would be normalizing the two uh, probabilities that we're getting, so we are ignoring this constant. I will tell you what we are doing. So if you look at the mathematics uh, section, as the probability of getting a uh, heads from coin A was 0. 0.6. Remember, theta A was 0. 0.6. That means the probability of getting a heads is 0. 0.6. So what we are doing is at 0. 0.6 raised to power 5 because we are having five success, five heads and five tails in the first iteration. That is why uh, five success and five failures into 0.4 uh, raised to power 5 giving us out 0. Uh, 0.0079 similarly for coin b if the same uh, if the same if the same uh, example belongs to point b then what is the probability distribution it would be 0. 0.5 raised to power 5 into 0. 0.5 raised to power 5 i think uh, we need to go a bit slow so if you look at this particular example the first one heads tails 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 heads heads tails heads tails heads so we have getting five heads and five tails that is five success and five failures now we also have expected value. We have also estimated a value for theta is equal to 0. 0.6 and theta b equals to 0. 0.5. Now using the binomial distribution, placing all these values in the binomial distribution, we are getting this particular value for point uh, for uh, coin A that is 0. 0.0079 and for coin B we are getting 0. 0.0009. Right. So on normalizing these two probabilities for these two coins, uh, the probability of first coin used for first experiment is 0. 0.5. And the probability of second coin being used for second uh, for the first experiment is 0.55. We are normalizing these values. We are doing nothing else. Nor by normalizing, we mean that what we are doing is uh, uh, adding the probability of A upon probability of A plus probability of B. Similarly, for calculating probability of A, we are, what we are doing is a probability of B upon probability of A plus probability of B. And that is why we are getting these 0 0.45 and 0 0.55. As the bias for uh, coin A was 0 0.45. So we would be expecting 2.2 heads and 2.2 tails. Similarly, as the bias for theta was 0 0.55, we are expecting 2.8 heads and 2.8 tails. Right. Uh, so what we did, uh, so uh, recapitulating again, we, exp we, uh, we took a rough value for theta, theta b. Then we first of using the binomial distribution in the first experiment, uh, we are trying to calculate uh, uh, the total number of expected heads and uh, expected tails if it has been used by coin A and coin uh, and similarly for coin B given the first iteration and then normalizing those probabilities and then using those probabilities to expect uh, to calculate uh, what is the total uh, expected number of uh, heads and tails that we could have got. Similarly for the next iteration we have uh, 9 heads and 1 tails uh, as the theta a equals 0 0.6 and theta b equals 0 0.5 again we would be following the same approach we would be using the binomial distribution again and according to it uh, what we would be getting is 0 0.8 for uh, the probability of a and 0 0.2 probability of b coin b being used for the second experiment and similarly we would be multiplying 0 0.8 into total number of heads and total number of tails similarly we would be multiplying the probability of b to total number of heads and total number of tails to get to 7.2 2 heads and 0 0.8 tails, 1.8 heads and 0 0.2 tails. I think it can be a bit confusing. Uh, so uh, there are three major steps that we need to follow. We are uh, having an estimated value. Uh, then we need to using the binomial distribution calculate the probability of the entire event. Okay. So if we are having nine success and one failure, the binomial distribution uh, we would be calculating a probability for that particular event. And then using uh, we will be multiplying that probability into total number of heads and total number of tails that are occurring to get to the expected number of total number of heads and total number of tails uh, for that particular coin if uh, it belong to uh, if the experiment belongs to coin a or else the coin b similarly we would be uh, for all the five iterations we will be running through and calculating total number of heads and total number expected total number of heads and total number of tails and then finally adding them up so uh, after the five uh, experiments that we have got 
uh, after summation we get 21.3 heads for coin a 18.6 uh, tails for coin a similarly 11.7 heads and 8.4 tails for coin b now as we did in the first step maximizations uh, like in uh, what we do uh, if we would have known the coins uh, which experiment was done using which coin what we are doing is that we are again coming to normalize the value so total number of heads upon total number of heads plus total number of tails giving us a probability around 0.71 for theta a and for theta b 11.7 uh, upon 11.7 plus 8.4 we are doing nothing that we, what we did is uh, uh, averaging out the values in the beginning we are doing the same thing so here we get the value as 0.58 now what we have done in the maximization step is that we are updating the values for theta and theta b so earlier we were using theta a equals to 0.6 theta b equals to point, uh, 0.5 now after the whole iteration has been done uh, and then we are adding them up and then we are updating theta a and theta b similarly this iteration can go on for long uh, we can we can go for multiple iterations and once the values start converging out we can stop it out on test such iterations, it has been observed that we get a value for theta equals to 0.8 and theta b equals to 0.5. Now, if you remember the initial values that we got uh, on averaging out when we knew that which uh, which experiment belonged to which coin, it was theta equals to 0.8 and theta b equals to 0.45. So we are almost on the same page. Hence, it shows that how expectation maximization can help us to uh, determine latent variables in the particular experiment. Here we are able to estimate the probability the bias in two coins using expectation maximization without even knowing which experiment belongs to which coin.